not only does it taste good, the pesto, but you could also monitor how much salt you want to put in it. I have found that if you buy store-bought, for me, it tends to be a little bit too salty. Uh, but this way you can monitor what kind of nuts. And anyway, it is so good. The salmon, I really want you guys to give this a try. and I'm in my little kitchen. Where else would I be, really? Um, anyway, today we are celebrating Jacob, my youngest son's 25th birthday. So I'm just having a little uh, dinner gathering with just Chris and I and Jacob, Izzy, and her brother. Unfortunately, his brothers and sisters weren't able to make it, uh, but that's okay because you know what? He still deserves to be celebrated. Anyway, so I asked him, because that's what I usually do, is um, I ask him, what's your birthday dinner? What do you want me to make? And because in his younger years, it was a lot different, uh, but lately he has really liked pesto, pasta, and uh, both he and Izzy are like vegetarians, I guess, but they do eat seafood. So I got the salmon. That's another story. <laughs> so we're having salmon and I'm going to kind of incorporate some of the flavors that are in the pesto in the salmon. I am just going to do a basic, um, I guess, drizzle or seasonings on the salmon because it is so big. And if you have leftovers, I want it to be versatile enough that I could put it with some other stuff. But this is a big baking sheet. <laughs> Look at how big this salmon is. Okay, the story behind that is, I go to my market, there's the seafood case. I thought, okay, the salmon looks pretty good. I'll take that salmon. The filet looked pretty good in the, um, in the you know, seafood case. And then the butcher, you know, takes it out and puts it up on the scale. Well, the scale is like here. So I'm looking up at the salmon. I'm like, okay, it's the piece I wanted, you know, stuff like that. But then when he wrapped it up and handed it to me, I looked at this and I thought, oh my gosh, this is one big salmon. I could feed like 12 people, probably at least with this salmon. And so I, I don't know, for me, I had to crack up because sometimes when I look at something, it looks okay. But then when I'm able to really see it at my height and right in front of me, it's completely different. So anyway, we've got a big salmon. So I'm going to definitely encourage them. Hey, if you want some leftovers, take some of this home. And um, so, yeah, anyway, you guys might not have thought that was funny, but I did because I came home with this. In fact, this is the big, and they had to fold it under. Oh, it was so, just so big. Anyway, so we're gonna have salmon tonight. I'm gonna do a basic dressing or herbs or whatever on this, um, because I'm going to about halfway through baking this, I think I wanna put just a little balsamic vinegar on it with feta and tomatoes. Uh, so the tomatoes will kind of roast in there and cook with the salmon. And I thought that would be really kind of good. We'll see how that goes. But I didn't want to have it um, like a teriyaki or kind of like, uh, for lack of words, kind of like the ginger Asian uh, flavors, like when you cook for a Asian cuisine. And so I kind of wanted it basic, but dress it up a little bit. And then I can sprinkle a little bit of parsley on there for dress up. So to do this, where is my, here it is. Let me, um, let me move some of this stuff out of the way. I always forget what you guys can see and don't see. But here is, look at it, it takes up like a half my space right here. <laughs> so crazy, but look at that. It is so huge. So we're having salmon for Jacob's birthday. So in this, Oh no, not this. Um, I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of oil. 
the olive oil around this. In fact, I don't think I want this one. I can manage it a little bit better in this. Did I ever tell you guys? I got this little olive oil container on Etsy. If you guys have never experienced Etsy, which I really got into Etsy when I was planning my wedding. There is a lot of creative people out there who are doing some great things. In fact, uh, one of Chris's uh, Christmas gifts was that I bought him a leather wallet from someone on Etsy that made it. I can't remember where I got it from. I'll have to look that up. So go to my IG stories and I'll kind of let you guys know where that was. But it was really good. I had it engraved with his initials in here. And then I also had it engraved, you know, inside the wallet. So he really liked it. I was really happy about that. But anyway, okay, we've got some olive oil going on. I am going to sprinkle some garlic on here. I have a clove or two of garlic. Like I said, this is very basic. But if I had like little salmon steaks or something like that, I think barbecued or a little teriyaki would go really good with this. Well, I hope I didn't. I don't think I did. I'm just gonna rub this around a little bit just so the olive oil is for sure. And this is not a sockeye. Sockeye we're known for, I think, out here. And so this is like an Atlantic which is kind of funny. I live here in the Northwest, but sometimes, uh, no, sockeye, I think sockeye here, but that's not really a salmon. It's kind of like a fish. Anyway, Chinook. We didn't have any Chinook at the market, so. And this uh, kind of has a little less bones or less intensity of bones, and so I thought that would be really good. So, a little olive oil, a little garlic, I'm even going to do a little bit of lemon zest. I've got a little bit of a lemon here. And so I'm just going to do a little bit of lemon. And I'm even going to put a little bit of lemon in my pesto. Just a little bit, just to give it a little freshness and break up the oil and uh, the cheese and stuff. So. Just kind of sprinkle that on here a little bit because it kind of all gathers. Let's see if I can actually, um, let's get this little seed out of here. I'm gonna just sprinkle this on. A little lemon juice. Now the biggest thing I'm debating right now is whether to cover this just ever so slightly with a uh, foil, not cover it and seal it, but just put a, like a covering on it so it doesn't dry out because it is so huge. Let me get these um, seeds out, a couple of seeds floated. I thought I got them all out, but who wants seeds on their salmon? I know I don't. And maybe I'm just thinking a little traditional here. Um, I might even put a little dill. But I don't think so because I'm gonna put feta and, and tomatoes and a little um, balsamic, I, I'm not gonna do dill. If anything, I might do a little bit of thyme. I think that's enough salt, salt here. Just a little bit of pepper, just a little bit. Told you, it's gonna be pretty basic because um, Sorry, I had to get a little time. Who wants to see the back of me, right? <laughs> Just a little bit of time. OK. 
Okay, I think that's enough. I think this will probably take, because it is so big, it's not just gonna take 10 minutes. I think it's gonna probably take at least 20. I have the oven at 350 degrees and I am just going to lightly going to lightly cover this so the steam and everything else can still come out but it will cook there we go so this may take I don't know about 20 minutes I'm going to check on it because frankly <laughs> I've never had this big of a salmon before <laughs> so I don't want to like totally destroy it and um and do something wrong. So, let's put it in the oven. Where's my spoon? Here, got a lot of juice here. A lot of juice that rolled off. Just kind of get that on there. I want it to bake, I just don't want it to Okay. Okay. And I think if I do see it dry out a little bit, um, I might just drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. But let's see if 20 minute works. Okay, here we go. In the oven. You know, I'm gonna do my timer. Oh, I forgot to put the foil on. I'm gonna do my timer at 10 minutes and just see where we're at. 10 minutes. Salmon's in the oven. I'm gonna put my water on for my pasta and we're gonna do the pesto. Okay, so I have the salmon in the oven. I'm making a birthday dinner for Jacob. And so I have my pot of water over here uh, getting heated up. I'll make sure that I, cause you wanna season your pasta water because you know, pasta needs to take on flavor as well and it'll enhance, you know, the food and everything. So even though I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in the pesto, I wanna make sure I don't over salt the pesto and then I have noodles that taste salty or too salty too. So you definitely wanna season your water. It'll incorporate flavor for your pasta, but obviously like anything else, make sure you don't overdo it. So to get started here, I've got, I'm making kind of a double batch here. It's gonna be kind of like your classic pesto, but there's a lot of things you can make pesto with. It's been a while since I've made my own, but there's arugula, there's, um, there's obviously basil, there's parsley, um, kale, you can make it out of kale. And I'm sure there's probably several other ingredients and items you can do olive oil because you need something to kind of emulsify it, bring it all together. You can use a variety of nuts. In fact, I have a combination of pine nuts and walnuts. Why? Because I wanted to, I guess. And I even toasted these just a little bit just to give it more of that little rustic kind of flavoring to it. So I don't know, there's about, uh, like I said, I'm doubling this recipe. Normally I'd probably only do like two tablespoons of pine nuts. So I have almost like four here, a uh, combination of pine nuts and walnuts. I have maybe about four cloves of garlic, unless you want it really garlicky. Uh, just be careful of your garlic because I could overdo it. Believe me, totally overdo it. So I'm gonna, in fact, I don't know, I don't trust myself here. So I have about two, no, I have about four cloves of garlic right here. And some of them were small, so that's why I'll go ahead and just add them all in here. So I'm gonna add in my garlic. I'm gonna add in the pine nuts and walnuts here. I am going to go ahead and add in a little juice from this lemon. Hopefully it'll be about a tablespoon or more. We'll see, I'm just gonna squeeze it. Oh, maybe I should do it in here. 
It's a little high. Boy, big lemon, but I should have zested this a little bit. It's a big lemon, but it's not as juicy as a lemon as I would have thought. So I'm gonna do like a tablespoon or more. Oh, that's the timer for my salmon. I'll check up on it here in a sec. I'm just gonna add in a little bit of zest. Okay, I hear ya. I hear ya, thank you so, so very much. probably one or two teaspoons of zest, whatever thickness that slice was, because I didn't want to put the whole lemon in here. So we'll go ahead and add this, a pinch of salt. And you know what, even for a little bit of heat, I am going to go add in, what kind of recipe did I put down here? Um, oh yeah. I forgot to grate my cheese. Okay, let me go get the parm. Let me go get the parmesan. Okay. Hi, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you are enjoying it. And I would really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to it. And oh, don't forget to click that little bell up there and you'll be notified of future videos that are new and coming on my YouTube channel. So thank you so much for that. And I would really appreciate it if you shared the video and let other people know and encourage them to subscribe and like the videos as well. So anyway, thank you and back to the video. Okay, I am going to go ahead and grate up, in fact, I already did about a half a cup of grated parm. I thought I'd do probably another, maybe this is a third. Yeah, this might be a third a cup. I can't see the writing. Anyway, might be a third. I'll do another third cup uh, because I'm gonna add in just a little more than half a cup of parm, Parmesan cheese into the pesto. Like I said, I'm almost making a double batch, if you wanna call it that. Normally it'd be just about two cups of basil that I have maybe about three cups and I thought it'd be kind of cool to add maybe a cup of parsley in there too. I don't know, just shake it up a little bit, add a little flavor here and there. And with the extra parm that I have left over, I'll be able to sprinkle it over the, um, over the pasta when it's done. Okay, I think that's enough here. So we're just gonna kinda do that here. All right, let's put that over here. And you know what? I forgot to check on my uh, salmon, so let's go do that. Let's go see how all of this is looking. I got the little, um, oh yeah, it's coming along. In fact, I think I might just leave this foil off for a minute, let it cook, let it finish cooking. But I have a feeling this is gonna take more than just 20 minutes. Okay, I just salted my pasta water and I put in a whole package of linguine noodles. You can use whatever noodles you want for pesto. Um, I mean, we put pesto, <laughs> all over so many things. Anyway, here we go, let's get this going. Oh, and by the way, I don't know, can you guys see this, I hope? This is my new toy, my brand new toy. I had a Cuisinart uh, food processor for eons, but I think because I dropped, <laughs> I dropped the lid or something and there's a little part that broke so the lid wouldn't go on all the way and so I thought okay my gift to myself was going to be a new food processor and here it is love it so we're just going to get these nuts and I'm going to use a I'm going to 
going to use one of these little things because I want to make sure the garlic gets down in there. Oops. Sometimes it goes up on the sides and it doesn't get all chopped up with everything else. Oops. Got caught on the little thing there. On the spatula, rubber spatula. There we go. And I just did a little bit of salt, a little bit of lemon juice. Oh, you know what else I want? I want little pepper flakes. So here we go. We're dumping all this in. Gotta make sure, hang on. Sorry, had to make sure my pasta noodles were not going to boil, boil over. And then let's go ahead and add in the parsley. Oh man, just the smell of the basil, look at this. Oh and the parsley, so much fresh, freshness and goodness. Okay, there we go. Put that all down in there. Okay, I'm gonna help it along here. And when you're doing this, Please be careful not, because I was just thinking, because I'm so close to this, that I don't lean into my food processor and turn it on accidentally. So definitely be careful with this. In fact, I probably should have taken off the lid, but I didn't do that. So what we're doing now is just we're blending in the basil and the parsley along with the nuts, the pine nuts and walnuts, along with the lemon juice and the garlic. Again, I'm just going to press this down a little bit. And it really depends on you at how chunky you want it. Or, here we go. So what you're really creating is a, a little pa uh, paste. No, I didn't think so. Now here comes the fun part. I'm gonna start off with a half a cup of olive oil. Use really good olive oil. I mean, if you use a strong flavor of olive oil, then you might take on the taste a little bit of that olive oil. So this is just an olive oil that um, is smooth. It's light, uh, extra virgin maybe. Well, I don't think this is extra virgin. I'm gonna go ahead and get a few red pepper flakes. We're gonna finish with this, the pesto. I'm gonna drizzle a little bit, a half a cup probably or more, and we're just going to lightly pulse it. I'm going to take this off though, because I think I need to scoop the rest of it down so it gets in there. Oh man, it just smells so good. The garlic. Then we're gonna get the cheese in there, a little bit of lemon juice. Okay. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna need a little bit more olive oil. Cause I don't want my pesto too dry, but the heat, but the heat of the pasta will warm it up too. Here we go. Thank you. 
probably about three quarters of a cup. So let's add in our Parmesan, Parmesan cheese. Uh, like I said, I have about a half a cup here. I'm not sure if I'll need any more, but we'll see. And of course, I absolutely have to taste it, okay? Let me see here. I think it might need just a you might need just a little more salt. I'm so glad I added that lemon juice in there. It kind of gives a brightness to it. So probably about two dashes of salt. Put that a little bit. I'm just gonna sprinkle in just a little bit more parm. Not too much, because I wanna use the rest of this. as like a little garnish over the pasta. Okay. Okay, I'm done with the pesto. I think my pasta is done. My salmon is finishing up. So I'm gonna kind of like drizzle olive oil while I'll show you. Okay. Okay, I think all you guys are seeing me in my glory because my counter is an absolute wreck right now. So, I've got about, I don't know, maybe just about a half a cup. Uh, no, I would say a couple of tomatoes in here. And so we're going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil over this. That was probably a lot. Could have used my other thing. A little bit of salt and pepper. I'm even going to add in a little bit of thyme to kind of complement what's on the salmon right now. What else? A little balsamic vinegar. We're just going to stir that up a little bit. Whoa, one got away. One tomato got away. And then we're gonna mix it in with some, where'd it go? Here we go, with some feta cheese. Now I have a feeling the tomatoes will probably roll off the salmon. So I might just sprinkle a little bit of feta on the salmon. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna take you over to the oven because that's where this is happening. If you don't see it, there it is. Little tomatoes mixed in with the feta. Okay, little balsamic vinegar. All right. Okay, here's the salmon. I think it's almost done, wow. Okay, just gonna kind of sprinkle this around the salmon. Like I said, the tomatoes will probably just roll off, but that'll be okay, because they're gonna kind of cook with the salmon anyway, around the edges here. I didn't wanna put too much tomatoes on here, but I'm gonna go ahead and Get a little bit, I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of balsamic on here. And I'm gonna even sprinkle just a little bit of feta on here. Then we're gonna mix up my noodles, because by the time this is done, everything else will be done. And then I'll show you the cake. Okay, let's get this back in the oven. 
And there we go. Okay, I drained the pasta, but just enough to maybe get a little bit of the pasta water in here because I think that will help with the deliciousness of the pesto. So we're gonna get this out. Just gonna scrape off the blade of all this goodness. Cause man, I tell you, if you're gonna go to all this work, you might as well get every little bit. And I'm just hoping that I made enough. And I still have some pasta water and a little bit of pasta left. So if I think if the pesto is a little bit too thick, I will add a little bit of water to it. So now you're getting the flavor of what you cook, the water that you cook the, pot, uh, yeah, the pasta in, plus the flavor of pesto and so yeah. So we're just gonna kind of mix this around. And if you're wondering why these noodles aren't like more of the white color, I used um, multi-grain linguine pasta noodles. I hope you guys are seeing this. Yeah. So I'm just using two forks. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a couple of teaspoons of the pasta water. What can I add this in? How about this? I did three teaspoons. I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit. I just wanna loosen the, pasta, uh, the pesto sauce just a little bit. Oh, guess who's here? Come on in. Guess who's here? Jacob and Isabel. So I think I'm gonna go ahead, got a little bit more pesto in here. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little bit more pasta. Where are my tongs? Okay. Hi, birthday boy. Hey. I'm doing a video. He's checking it out. Cause he already knows his mom is crazy. Okay, there we go. Sorry, Jacob, I was hoping to have this all done by then. Okay. There we go. Okay. So we're just gonna finish this up. pasta pesto here with a little bit of sauce to go. Let's see here. Hi, good. So here is the pesto pasta. I mixed in with a little bit of the pasta water just to kind of create that flavor that the pasta actually cooked in. And I just shaved some Parmesan, 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 Parmesan cheese on this along with uh, parsley for garnish. And, and like I said, if you're wondering why the noodles aren't light enough, it's because I use protein noodles. So anyway, so Jacob, think it's looking good? Oh yeah. Okay, he's holding his baby so he doesn't wanna be on camera. But anyway, birthday dinner, boy! Okay, so let me get the salmon out and see how that's going. I'm gonna use up a little bit of parsley to garnish that as well. 
Okay, there's Chris. He's making the drinks for the birthday Roger. boy. Oh, our wedding glass. Oh, yeah, look at that. Our wedding glass. Isn't that great? Yeah. Love it. <laughs> so, of course, I'm always late getting these videos finished, but this is my daughter-in-law, Isabel, because we are celebrating Jacob's 25th birthday. Yeah. Oh, this is huge. I know. This is a big one. I can't believe it's 25. So I already told her the story of the salmon, which I already told you guys on the video really quick. This is huge. This will feed like 12 people. <laughs> so Chris and I will have leftovers. We'll probably have leftovers for Jacob and Izzy. Mm -hmm. And Izzy's brother is over here, Nico, to help us celebrate Jacob. And it's gonna be really a lot of fun. Yeah, so we're excited. I'm not sure where your drink is, but cheers. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they're here. I better wrap this up. I'll it do this. so good. Does it's it? Be so I mean, good. yeah. The thing is, because this was so big, oh, like I was telling them, because this was so big, I didn't do like teriyaki or, you know, something like that. Because with leftovers, I right. wanted it to be a little more versatile. Right. So there's a little lemon juice on here, salt and pepper, a little thyme. I don't know. I just like that. And this feta, feta cheese. Yeah, a little bit of feta cheese, a little bit of balsamic. Okay. And I just thought with the tomatoes roasting, cooking with the fish, I, I just thought that would be really good. Yeah. So anyway, and see how the feta is melted a little yeah. bit? How long do you usually have, like, a, this big? Like, you'll probably have to cook it longer. Well, I poked my fork in there, so it should be done. This well, I just mean, like, how long? Depending on how big your, uh, your salmon is, and usually it's a little less meat, a little thinner, yeah. or your salmon steaks. I think it's only like what, about maybe 10 minutes yeah 10 to 12 well this is almost 25 okay. minutes or so and it's 350 degrees but the thing about salmon is though you've got a thin piece here a thicker one yeah. here so you don't want to overdo it no yeah. and so i covered it for about the first 20 minutes with foil took it off and then that so hopefully you can hear us <laughs> it's gonna be great well, I'm back because I wanted to finish up the birthday dinner that I made for Jacob for his 25th. Um, if you saw, you know, in the earlier part of my cooking video here, I had one big piece of salmon. I thought I made a lot of uh, pasta with pesto sauce. Pasta pesto. Oh my goodness, that's a pea tongue twister. Anyway, um, oh, I am so happy. He loved it. Everyone loved it that came, you know, Chris and I, uh, Isabel's brother, Nico and Isabel and Jacob, they loved it. It was a great birthday dinner. And so I just kind of wanted to wrap it up that um, I think if you have not made homemade pesto before, it is worth it. Do it. Um, you can, like I said earlier, you can make pesto out of basil, more traditional, spinach arugula, parsley, um, I'm sure there's a few other, spinach, there's probably a few other things that I'm forgetting here. Uh, just with a little bit of simple, uh, simply with a little bit of olive oil, Parmesan cheese, a little salt and pepper. I put in a little bit of lemon zest and a little bit of lemon juice. Uh, I'm gonna say maybe two, two teaspoons of lemon juice and definitely one teaspoon of lemon zest possibly, but just a little bit, just to give it and balance out a little bit of the saltiness, but the um, richness of the walnuts and the pine nuts. You can just do pine nuts. I did a combo of pine nuts and walnuts. You can just do pecans. Um, even maybe hazelnuts will work or almonds. Anyway, this turned out so good. I forgot how long it's been since I've made my own homemade pesto. I absolutely love it. It's so versatile. You can put it over fish. I put it over salmon here because this is what Jacob wanted for dinner. And as you saw in the earlier part of the video, I made it simply because it was such a big piece. And if we had leftovers, I wanted to be able to use it for other things. But no, it was almost all gone. I gave, I sent them home with a little bit of leftovers and I saved a little bit of, of the salmon uh, for Chris and I, and so I just got done making the uh, spaghetti and pesto again because it was so, so good. Anyway, I'm telling you, it was good. And if you think your pesto is a little bit too thick, use some of the pasta water that you cooked your pasta in. That incorporates 
um, not only loosens up the pesto, but it still keeps it uh, thick and not too runny. So anyway, well, I did not cut up these noodles, that's for sure. So let's see here. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm. I love this. Not only does it taste good, the pesto, but you could also monitor how much salt you want to put in it. I have found that if you buy store-bought, for me, it tends to be a little bit too salty. Uh, but this way you can monitor what kind of nuts. And anyway, it is so good. The salmon, I really want you guys to give this a try. It's simple, it's easy, it tastes good. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm. I'm just so happy that Jacob's birthday dinner came out so well. So anyway, go to my YouTube channel, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen, and give this recipe a try. Uh, pesto pasta, and I don't know what I'm going to call it. I'm, I'll probably just call this uh, baked salmon with roasted tomatoes and feta. Anyway, it's so good. But from my kitchen to yours, thank you for tuning in. And I'll be in the kitchen trying to cook up some more and maybe come up with a recipe or two. So thanks for joining me.